creating students, this um, is going to be my third attempt to create a video about the steps to graphing a quadratic. Um, so you should have already practiced some finding the axis of symmetry and finding the vertex. Um, so we're going to look at finding a few more points after that one point um, and using the axis of symmetry to mirror those points to find more points and then connecting them to make a pretty good parabola, all right? Um, we will not be following quite these directions because we are not using a graphing calculator, and so I'm not saying these directions are incorrect, but with the tools in our toolbox, it's not quite helpful, all right? So my apologies. Um, try to remember next term that I need to, uh, like, insert my own directions there. So we're going to find the vertex and put it in the table and then we're going to use the next two largest numbers larger numbers for x to find two more points and mirror them. All right, so we're going to mirror them to find two other points to the left of the axis of symmetry. So it's going to make more sense as I show you, and I've now written that out altogether four other times and never written it exactly in the same words. So here we go. Um, so in this case this is the most basic of um, quadratics. It's just y equals x squared. So it's as simple as it could be um, and it's going to give us a nice shape for a parabola and then many parabolas are just really that parabola moved around a little bit. Um, and then some are, you know, stretched to be skinnier or spread out to be fatter, but um, this one is going to be pretty straightforward. So first off, remember axis of symmetry, we do negative b over 2a. In this case, there is no b, so b is 0, right? There is no x term, and so 0 divided by anything x is 0. So the axis of symmetry is at x is 0. For the axis of symmetry, I would always encourage you to put that on your graph. In this case, that is actually the same place as the y-axis. So remember, axis of symmetry, this is going to be the line that splits my parabola into two like mirror images. Like It's symmetrical across this line. So I know that my first point, x is 0, and if x is 0 and I plug that in, the y when x is 0, the y is also 0. So that gives me my vertex, 0, 0. So my vertex in this case is right in the center at the origin. And now when I then the next point to the right, the next two largest, larger numbers, so 1 and 2, I'm going to use both of those as additional x values. And so then x is equal to, or if x is equal to 1, right, y is equal to 1 squared, which is just 1. And when x is 2, 2 squared, which is 4. Now, in this case, that was a really super easy step. Sometimes when there is an A, B, and C, that's going to take a little more time. But in this case, it was easy. So now I'm going to plot those two points. So 1, 1, and 2, 4. Now, we could also do the two points to the left of the axis of symmetry. But let's use what we know about an axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry tells me 
that it's going to have mirrored points across. So if I mirror that first point, it's here. And if I mirror this point, it's here. So now I have five points, and I can sketch a pretty decent, even for me, I'm pretty close. Show me a little grace. All right, so keep in mind, if we tried three, we would be all the way three, nine, which would be off the top of the graph. So it really would be going off the top of the graph uh, but for what we actually see, just to get at, at three even. So I don't really, doesn't matter to me. You could do negative one, one, negative two is four. But typically, the point of making the table is the, to be able to make the graph. And you would not really need to plug in negative 2 and negative 1 because we can find those points just by mirroring them across the axis of symmetry. So now we're going to think about what is the domain of this function. So domain, remember, is the x's. So kind of think of what numbers would I be allowed to use for x. Yeah, any number, right? So for the x, my domain is all real numbers. I could say all real numbers. Um, you might use, you know, negative infinity to positive infinity. Um, the range, though, what numbers are being used for y? So think about this graph. It's heading up, right? So everything greater than the vertex, the vertex is actually a minimum, would be included, but it never uses the bottom half of the graph. So the y's are greater than or equal to zero. So a little secret for these quadratics, our domain is always going to be all real numbers. And our range, always going to have to do with the y, and it's either going to be greater than or equal to whatever the y of the vertex is, or if it's heading down, it's going to be less than or equal to that number. So these two numbers will always match, and this number and this number will always match. Not all four of them will always be the same like they are here, though. All right, so let's try another one. That, again, is our just very basic parabola. Okay, so here on number two, I'm going to have a little more work. I don't just get to square x. So first step, find your axis of symmetry. So x equal negative b, so negative 2 over 2 times 1. So that's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. So my axis of symmetry, x is equal to negative 1. As soon as I know that, I know my vertex, the x of the vertex at least is negative 1. So here I know I'm going to use negative 1, I know I'm going to use 0, I know I'm going to use 1. And I don't mind, you don't need to fill in the rest of the table because you can just mirror the points to get the other two points. So now I need to find the y's to go with those x's, basically. So first off, I'm going to go, before I even do that, I'm going to go ahead and graph that axis of symmetry. In this case, it's at x is equal to negative 1. Remember, it's always going to be a vertical line. There we go, vertical line, all the way through. All right. Oh, hold on, I got a little stray over here. It's going to upset me. All right, so now this is where it's going to be more work. So I'm doing y is equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. Now. In some ways, that almost makes it look harder because I threw in those parentheses, but it is so important 
if you're typing that into a calculator that you're using the parentheses around the one that's squared because this becomes 1 minus 2 minus 1 which is negative 2 and that is not the answer we'll get if we don't use parentheses around the first negative 1 All right so Again, you can type that into your calculator. You could also just do like, oh, I know that negative 1 squared is 1. And then next I'm going to, so you could wait and do all your plotting at once, or you can figure out the points, plot, figure out the points, plot. It's okay, either way. But I know my vertex now is negative 1, negative 2. And I could go ahead and put that on my graph. Negative 1, negative 2 is down here. The vertex is always going to be on the axis of symmetry because it has the same x as that line. Now if I plug in 0, so now I'm doing y equals 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 1. Well, if those are zeros, hopefully we can see that the x parts would just go away and all I would have left is negative 1. So 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1 is here. And then I know there would be a mirror point over here. Or I could do my mirror after, right? I've got lots of choices. And then now I need to find I go one more space to the right, that's why I'm using 1, all right? I put in a 1, so now it's positive 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1. So I've got 1 plus 2 minus 1, so the y would be 2. So then 1, 2. So from the center, 1, 2, and that's going to be mirrored across the axis of symmetry. So it's two spaces to the right of the axis of symmetry, two spaces to the left of the axis of symmetry, and then it's going to give me this other point. And then now I attempt to connect them smoothly. Keep in mind there's an exponent involved, involved, so as numbers get larger, things get big pretty fast. Sorry, that side just was not acceptable to me. And once again, our domain is all real numbers. And our range, so think about the y's that would be used would be y's that are, it's heading up, so y's that are greater than or equal to, and then what is the lowest it goes? Negative 2. So all of the y's from negative 2 and up would get used. So the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Notice my axis of symmetry and my x of my vertex are the same and my y of my vertex is the same as my boundary for my range. All right, so number three, I see already that I have negative x squared. So I know this guy is going to open down, right? As soon as I see this, I know it's going to open down. So it's just kind of something to have in my mind as I start to plot my points, that I should expect that. All right, so let's go on there to number three. So go ahead and try to see what your axis of symmetry is gonna be and your vertex, and then pause me and I'll be back with mine. All right, I'm back. And you can look there at my work for finding my axis of symmetry. Notice when I did negative b, 
B was negative, so it turned it to positive. And then 2 times negative A, 2 times negative 1 for A, sorry, is negative 2. So then when we divide that, we get negative 4. Um, when I plug in negative 4, notice it doesn't just turn positive because negative, negative, because the 1 negative 4 is being squared, which gives me positive 16, but then the negative on the outside switches it back to being negative 16. Um, and then negative 8 times negative 4, positive 32, of course, minus 17. So y turns out to be negative 1. So we'll pick up there. Um, I'm going to put my axis of symmetry, so negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, vertical line here, I just make it a dotted line. It's not actually part of your parabola, but it helps you to do your mirror image so that you um, don't have to do so much work, especially in a problem like this where it is more complicated. All right, so if I had negative 4 for my first x, then my next x, if I go one more than negative 4, my next x is going to be negative 3. And then after that, one more than that, my next x I'm going to use is negative 2. So I'm finding the two points to the right of the line, and then I'll mirror them to get two points to the left of the axis of symmetry. So negative 4, negative 1 is here, and then we'll find some more points to go with that. Now, as you can see, this is going to be more complicated because now what I'm doing is I'm going back here and I'm replacing those two numbers with negative 3. So it may help to have a piece of scrap paper or if you're typing it all into the calculator, you can arrow back over um, to change what you have in the calculator. It's kind of hard for me to show you what I'm doing if all I'm doing is typing in a calculator. So I am going to write it out. Notice this part, there's my x. Here's going to be another x. So that's the part that's changing. So now negative 3 squared is 9. But then there's this extra negative on the outside, so now it's back to being negative 9. Negative 8 times negative 3, positive 24. And then the negative 17 at the side. So now when I combine those positive and negative numbers, we end up with y is equal to negative 2. So negative 3, negative 2. So I had negative 4, negative 1. Now negative 3, negative 2 is here. I know because of symmetry that there will be a point on the other side of the line that has the same y. So that would be here. So again, you could wait and do that at the end and mirror both points at the same time. Now, if I'm like, ooh, why are they going down? Oh yeah, I remember. The x is negative, the x squared is negative, the a is negative. It is going to open down. So that should be what I expect to happen. And now we're going to do the same thing, but with negative 2. So y is equal to negative, negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 minus 17 again. So negative 2 squared is 4. This makes it negative 4 plus 16 minus 17. So we end up at negative 5. So negative 5 is my y for my third point there. So at negative 2, 2 to the left, I'm talking about from the center, right? 2 to the left, down 5 is here. And then mirrored across, 1, 2, 1, 2, here. Now, if I try to smoothly, eh, not too bad. So that is a pretty good approximation of what my parabola looks like. Our domain is, of course, all real numbers, right? Our range, 
what's happening with the y's? Well, I've pointed out to you before, you should use the y of the vertex. But now is it all the numbers greater than that? Like before we used greater than or equal to. No, it's going down, so it's all the numbers less than or equal to the negative 1. All right, here's another example for you. We'll go to number 6. I chose number 6 because it doesn't have a B, and sometimes that throws people off. So if I don't see a b, remember this is not b, this is c, because b should be the coefficient of x. So the axis of symmetry, 0 divided by negative 2, is just 0. So my axis of symmetry is 0. But unlike our very first one, in this one, it's not going to be 0, 0. So if I do negative 0 squared minus 2, well, this part all does become 0 but it's just equal to negative 2. So our axis of symmetry here is going to be that y-axis again. I'm going to use the highlighter this time just because it might show up a little bit better. So this is my axis of symmetry that I usually do with my dotted line. And then our vertex is at 0, negative 2. And then you might think to yourself, what else do I know about this? Just at a glance, I know it's going to open up or down. Yeah, it's going to open down. And we already said that we have our vertex, 0, negative 2. So now I'm going to, the next one to the right, if I do positive 1, and then the next one, positive 2. So you might think, well, I just always like to do negative 2 to positive 2. And for some things, that works out nicely. But for some, if the axis of symmetry is all the way at, like, x equals 5, those num numbers further away from it are going to get very large or very small, like big negatives, and then they won't fit on your graph. Occasionally, you might still get a problem or two where your second point doesn't fit on your graph. So don't be completely alarmed by that. All right, so back to this. When I do 1, now I'm doing negative 1 squared minus 2. Keep in mind, this negative is on the outside, right? It happens after I square it. So this is negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And then when I do 2, right, these were my y equal. When I do 2, well, I have negative 2 squared minus 2. It's not becoming negative before the squaring. It's becoming negative after. So this becomes negative 4 minus 2, negative 6. So now I have two more points. We can put those on the graph. 1, negative 3 and 2, negative 6, and then those two points would be mirrored across. I mean, if you want to um, plug those two numbers in and go through evaluating, you certainly can, but the idea of symmetry is very powerful here in that it saves us the work of plugging in those other two. And our domain, yep, all real numbers. How about our range? We know the range has to do with the y. It's going down, so since it's opening down, it's going to be less than or equal to. Where's the highest point? What's that maximum? The maximum's at negative 2, so the range is y is less than or equal to negative 2. All right, we're going to go from there to number 10, and then that's going to be our last example.
All right, so number 10, last example. In fact, it might be one more example than I actually do in class because in class I would want you to be able to get started on your homework and be working on it and I could answer your questions. Um, so I don't like to spend too much time just showing you. I want you to be able to dig in there and try it on your own. So here we go. Um, axis of symmetry, that's what we're going to find first when we have the equation. So negative b over 2a. So in this case, negative b then becomes positive 18. 2a becomes negative 6. And then 18 divided by negative 6 is negative 3. So x is equal to negative 3 is my axis of symmetry. So one, two, three. So this is going to be my dividing line that it mirrors across. It will be symmetrical across that axis of symmetry. And I know that my axis of symmetry is also the x of my vertex. So now we are plugging a negative 3 into all of the x's. So negative 3 here at the beginning as the a, negative 3 squared minus 18 times negative 3 minus 20. So I have negative 3 times 9 plus 54 minus 20. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27 plus 54 minus 20. So I end up with positive 7. And that's my first point in my table, negative 3, 7. That is my vertex. I can go add that to my graph. Negative 3, positive 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And fortunately, I know this is going to open down, or I would be a little concerned that I'm already at the very top of my graph. So now we're going to go back through this process. Again, that could just be typed in the calculator, but going back through that process, but now I'm going to use the next number to the right. So what's one number bigger? If I add 1 to negative 3, negative 2. And add 1 to that, negative 1. You could do negative 4 and negative 5. They would take you to the left, and then you could mirror those to the right. That would also work. What you don't want, you don't want to like get a whole bunch of points that are all on one side, and you don't want to do a point and its mirror. The most efficient way is to go to the same side and then be able to mirror them to the other side. All right, so let's see. Here we go. Negative 3 times negative 2 squared minus 18 times negative 2 minus 20. All right, so that's 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 36, minus 20, which would be 4. So the y, when x is negative 2, the y is 4. So I had negative 2, positive 4. And I know that that would be mirrored on the other side of the line. All right, now we're going to do negative 1 because that would be the next number to the right. Negative 1 squared minus 18 times negative 1 minus 20. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Two negatives make this positive 18 and minus 20. So now I have negative 5 as my y.
So negative 1, negative 5, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And that would be mirrored over here, two places to the right of my axis of symmetry. So this one, you're going to notice that the parabola is still a U shape. Ooh, well, it's supposed to be. Excuse my bad connection skills. It's still a U shape, but now it's very much skinnier, right? Right? It's it's narrow, right? Because what makes it so narrow, like we've got negative three x squared. So the negative part makes it flip over, and the three is making it get skinny. All right, so let's think about our domain and range. By the way, I could have identified domain and range as soon as I know my vertex. Domain, all real numbers, and the range. Is it heading up or down? It's heading down, so we know the y's are less than or equal to. What's the highest y that they go? That's the y of our vertex, which is 7. And that, my friends, is how you graph a parabola. There are a few things also to notice. Um, if I did not mention before, because I did not mention it um, in the other video because there wasn't a spot for it, if it's in standard form, your C value will be your um, y-intercept. All right, so in this case, the y-intercept is at negative 20. So it's way down the graph. And hey, that's good because my graph, my parabola, has not crossed the y-axis yet. So if you look back at some of your others, if you look back at number 6, you'll see your y-intercept is at negative 2, and that is your c. If you look back at your graph for number 3, you can't see your y-intercept. That's good because it's all the way down at negative 17. We should not be crossing the y-axis yet. <coughs> Pardon me, in our small graph. Number two, you'll see that it crosses the y-axis at negative one, and that is your C.